So I heard you talk about in another interview, getting into partnership or bed with the wrong production company is not yeah. good. And I think that a lot of artists maybe will get with the wrong manager or the wrong record label or the, you know, the wrong partners in general. So what advice do you have? What have you learned from a wisdom standpoint about this? It's, it's a major issue. Basically, all of us would go around LA with a great idea. And 10 people or production companies would say no to it. And then the 11th would say, yeah, I love it. And they would want to buy an option. Usually it's going to be a cheap option. But even if they put a lot of money, they might not be the right DNA for that story. With Euphoria, we, we like after before, even before the networks, after I think a few, I don't remember how many uh, producers said no to it. There was one studio, a big studio, that is doing like incredibly expensive films, but from other genres, more mm -hmm. more uh, sci-fi and stuff. They said they love it and they want to develop it. They want to get into television. When they came with the idea to networks like HBO, the networks said, well, I mean, thought to themselves, well, we, this is not a producer who can work with an artist and help guide an artist to the right DNA of this show. So we don't trust this studio. And only when we got back the options, and it took, I think, five years, we got back the options, we could find the right home for it. We were lucky because the management at HBO was replaced and the president and the, well, everyone were replaced. And Casey Bloss jumped two steps in from being head of comedy to being head of drama than to be president of HBO. Mm -hmm. And he remembered the pitch. But I think he felt like, first of all, he needs a producer mm -hmm. who would be the right one for this DNA. A24, who are producing it, they've done uh, Lady Bird and they've done the Oscar-winning um, film uh, Moonlight. This is a type of a DNA, a type of creators that, that, that are right for this type of a story. It's not even like a good producer, bad producer. It's a producer mm -hmm. that would be right for this tone. But a lot of us, even today, I think about myself, if 10 people would say no to me, I would most likely be convinced to go with the 11th. But are you getting into married to, to the wrong person? Your relationship with the people, they're going to be the the success or the failure or, or, and everything. Like So I don't think there is a right or wrong way to deal with it, but you must be aware of it. You must be brave to say no. Everyone will tell you your career is defined by your ability to say no to opportunities more than it is defined by your ability to say yes to opportunities. Yeah, completely. I just heard somebody in an interview say, um, yes is expensive. I thought that was such a good way to put it. On that note, I was reading in the thing that, that Drake got involved, right? In yeah. Euphoria. And, yeah, Drake and, is an executive producer. Can you, and, yeah, can uh, you tell me, friends. please, how did that come about? HBO and A24. I mean, you know, it's so Drake has a production company and mm -hmm. the guy is not only hardworking, he is brilliant, of course. He's yeah, he'll show up to the table a, a, reads, I heard, right? He's, he's showing up to things, yeah. right? On and he was doing television before he was doing anything else, right? I mean, he's kind of... And he's just brilliant. When Hunter Schaefer was was involved in, in writing the special episode in the pandemic, and it, you, you realize how, what these incredible talents are capable of bringing to the table. So that's a blessing, right? Completely. But these are the cast and everyone. These are brilliant souls. And what we did, what we started even in the original version is with, on the one hand, trying to respect the fact that being an actor is, is something, it's not just a talent, it's something you've been learning for years and you yeah. are getting most professional about ever. But at the same time, trying to bring some voices who were non-actors that you were able to find, unique voices that you were able to find outside. We did that a lot in the original Euphoria and then Sam did it brilliantly with the casting director to bring the Fesco character and that guy's through. my favorite. He's my favorite yeah. character, by the way, in, in Euphoria. So he came off the street. Is that yeah, true? Kind of. He like, was uh, working. Uh, I think he was working as a waitress at uh, Chicken and Waffle in New Jersey. Hunter, she was on her way to study art in Europe. She's a brilliant artist and fashion design designer and, and, and an activist and so many things. I think even the audience, when the audience think of how bold you need to be when making decisions as, as a showrunner, they think of all oh, the bold plot lines. They never think of the things, the risks you're taking when you're thinking out of the box and taking these powerful decisions that are creating something. Because I'll, I'll tell you what, what the thing is. Like basically, this industry works in a way where you're creating 500 shows 
a year in LA. All these shows are being made based on something that is called a mandate. Like every network is trying to create every season a list of what they're looking for, what's yeah. going to work. And this list that are sometimes today even being made by with the help of MBA graduates, like people are not artists at all, but trying to analyze what's working right now. They're yeah. building a formula of what's yeah. going to work. And then 500 shows are going to look the same in, in, in a sense. And you and I are going to step in with a unique voice and they will say, well, but we're not, this is not what we're looking for this year. <laughs> Eventually that the shows that are going to be breaking the China and being the number one hit will always be those that 20 networks said no to with Stranger Things. Like they came with Stranger Things to 20 networks. Everyone said no to it. And everyone told them, well, we can't, you can't do a show with the point of view of the kids. You need to have an FBI guy leading mm -hmm. the show as a point of view. It will never work. But eventually when it was made and because it is so unique in the field of like 500 shows, only then it was because it, Netflix ever had until that moment it was the most watched show ever when you have a, a show that comes with a unique voice and has the potential to be breaking the China and doing something brilliantly new mm -hmm. you should expect to be rejected by 20 networks and fight hard for our fear is from spending five years of your life on a story and being produced and then disappearing and be meaningless forgotten yeah, yeah, yeah. and forgotten yeah. and being yeah. and, and and have no impact on on anyone and being one out of 500 shows that are being made for nothing right it's again speaking to the resistance that these types of things get the thirty thousand foot view that we're speaking from i think is easier than when you're actually in the battlefield yeah. like pushing yeah. and going through the resistance it's hard man but i love what you're saying because you've said it a few times now ron pulling back and recognizing that a lot of your favorite pieces of art have all gone through that. 